Okay, so you you you. No, but I know so that, it's dangerous. I right? know. I, no, people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and but, fail no, fairly regularly. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So you're ready to drink one glass of no, glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Interview me about golden rice. That's did, what I'm talking did, about. Okay, then it's except, finished. Except, except, then the interview is finished. That's a, that's a good way to solve things. Yeah. You're a complete jerk. <laughs> uh, and guys, just, just Google Mercury is good for you. And, and it's a CBS saying, uh, oh, we have it here. Let's play Mercury's good for you. Because remember, we're the conspiracy theorist. You know, hey, they drink it and only die some of the time from a glass of it. You know, it's not that bad. It only kills you some of the time you drink a whole glass right away. And you know, Mercury, you drink a teaspoon of it, it'll kill you. But you know what? It's good for you. It's good in the vaccine. Here it is. I'm sick of your glasses and contact lenses. A new corrective eye surgery is approved today. Yay. Here's tonight's medical headlines with Medical Watch reporter, Tima Mather. Mercury-containing vaccines may help not harm kids, according to two new studies in the journal Pediatrics. There have been widespread concerns that mercury-based preservatives in vaccines might impair the neurological development of children. These new studies suggest that the opposite, that the preservatives may actually be associated with improved behavior and mental performance. And if you have a business, you didn't build that, and 2 plus 2 equals 5, and under Obamacare, it's free, which it's not, and uh, everything else. And nobody's coming after your guns either. Vani Har, this is a short segment, 18-minute long segment coming up. We can really flesh this out in some of the latest news. But foodbabe.com forward slash Subway Meat. Folks need to get your latest promo video. They need to send it out on Twitter, Facebook. They need to contact Subway. Because it seems like every time we take action now, they're caving in. And so many ads I see for fast food now or grocery stores, period, are advertising. We're fresh. We're organic. We're safe. Uh, it seems like we're reaching a critical mass moment. Yeah, you know, finally people, because of the Subway campaign last year that I actually announced here on the day that I uh, launched it to get out azodicarbonamide, the yoga mat chemical out of Subway's bread, finally opened people's eyes up to eating fresh isn't really eating fresh. And now people need to pay attention to the meat because 7.6 billion su million subs are sold every single day by Subway, they are the largest by number of chains of restaurants, even though they're losing money just like McDonald's. I think they lost more money last year than even McDonald's uh, from the reports that I just read. And so this is really a shift in consumer perspective. And there's a whole like snowball revolution of changes happening where these corporations are starting to remove artificial food dyes. They're starting to go antibiotic free. They're starting to offer more organic options, but we've got a long, way to go. And unfortunately, some of these brands have lost so much of our trust that I don't know if they'll even survive. And and really, you know, you see that with McDonald's, you see that with Subway. Um, and, and there's so many other trust issues happening with Subway as it is. And so we're really at a critical moment here where our voting with our dollars, our petitioning these companies are making more and more people aware of these issues is really creating a shift in momentum in terms of conventional food that was poorly raised, full of toxins, to now food that is organic and real and whole. And that is really what we need to go and back to. And that's creating a whole new economy for us where that food can now be exported. I've been reading how we have to import most of our organic food, and the, yep. and the farming associations aren't even telling farmers, hey, you can be making a lot of money with organics because there's such a culture controlled by big pharma and by the big industries to not let farmers know this. Yeah, and you know, you look at Chipotle and they're having to get some of their beef and pork from other countries because we just don't have enough here that's raised humanely that isn't antibiotic free. And so we're, you know, now outsourcing our food and we need to go back and take a look at our farmers here and see how we can change their practices from within. And that's how these type of campaigns start to do that. Once Huge companies like Subway and others like McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and others who have actually that made... That scales the whole market. It's like We're when Walmart carries your product. Uh, it's set. I mean, we, we make them cave in, it's over. They'll be back. Here are the headlines at Infowars.com. Drudge Report has them lined up uh, nicely. Cop hunting. Houston deputy shot 15 times in the back. Suspect in ambush held without bond. Sheriff says Obama started this war on police. Dangerous rhetoric as Black Lives Matter continues to chant pigs in a blanket. Cop hunting. 
is what the suspect reportedly was out doing. And it's all directly out of the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs will host the entire fourth hour today at Infowars.com forward slash show. We're bringing the fourth hour back, so affiliates are welcome to start picking that hour up. And they're going to have a man running for sheriff who's endorsed by Sheriff Arpaio, by uh, Richard Mack, who's a constitutionalist. And he's down there and give us the inside scoop on what happened and on where he sees the situation going. Bonnie Hari, the food babe, uh, is with us. I've got a bunch of medical food news, cannabis news I want to run over with her. Anthony Gucciardi's here, uh, who is our food and health reporter in studio with Vani Hari, uh, the food babe, launching another initiative. Uh, let me ask you this question, food babe. Talk about globalism or, or all these other things that are being pushed by the establishment. Once the people turn against them, it doesn't matter how much support they put behind it. It's over. T to me, I keep saying this, this really is the model of how to bring down so many other things that are being force-fed from the top down uh, all these initiatives coming to a head. I mean, sure, Monsanto shot down mandatory labeling in California and other states, but just the process of the public being educated made them go out and make their right decision anyways. So it doesn't matter if they stole those elections, stole those, those referendums, which I think they did. The evidence is overwhelming. The battle in the court of public opinion is what is going to end up bringing them down. So how do you expect this to now flesh out? What do you think the next shoe to drop is? And how do you think they're going to strike back? So I think what's happening right now is you've got an interesting situation. You've got major fast food chains losing money uh, hand over fist every single quarter. You've got the conventional food sector losing money or staying stagnant. The only companies that are continuing to increase in growth are organic and natural. And when they increase in growth or they increase in uh, just consumer demand, what I see happening now is these multi-billion dollar conglomerates are actually buying up these corporations. We've seen uh, Hormel by Applegate, which is an organic, sustainable meat brand. We've got General Mills buying Annie's. We've just got Coca-Cola, who's investing in Suja juices that are the green juice company. And so really, these major corporations, I don't know if they'll ever be gone in terms of like the big major food corporations or or if they're going to just continue to buy up consumers and eventually, you know, we're going to end up buying Coca-Cola products or Pepsi products or General Mills products because they're going to buy the entire organic food sector. Right now, if you look at the capital um, just collectively between Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they could buy all of the organic food system today if they wanted to. So that's pretty scary. To so that's about. how they're striking back. And, and we see that with the TPP, the multinational model. They come in, they buy them up. Then they change the rules and laws so you can't keep GMO out of your country and you can't label. And so they buy it up, then they change the laws. And no matter how many companies we try to go patronize or support, they just buy those up. So that's that's how the empire is going to strike back. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's going to happen. And, and what we can do as consumers is just shape their products and hold them accountable when they do buy these different organic and natural brands to make sure they don't change. Now, some organic brands have changed dramatically when they've been bought by these bigger corporations. I'll give you an example. Campbell's bought Plum Organics, which is a baby food company, was 100% organic. And now they have non-organic meat products and dairy products in Target. So like people are buying Plum thinking it was organic or healthier, healthier than the alternative of Gerber and other things. But now they're they're watering down their food. And so it's really important for us to always stay on our toes read ingredient labels, and make sure these companies don't change their ingredients and practices after they've been bought by these major conglomerates. What are the other big angles you're looking at right now? And then I've got Anthony Gucciardi here with some breaking news to get your take on. Yeah, the other big angles that I'm looking at right now is false advertising. You know, just this morning I learned of Chipotle being sued in San Francisco because they are under the impression, consumers are under the impression that it's completely GMO free. However, their meat, some of their meat is raised with GMO feed. And then also they're still serving Coca-Cola that's full of GMOs. And so 
consumers are now contacting lawyers and saying, you know what, it's not all GMO free. This is this is false advertising. And they're suing even the good guys that are trying to do the right thing. And so I've seen that start to happen, as well as I see what's happening right now within awareness that's happening in terms of understanding what's GMO free and what's not. And and there's a lot of different false advertising going on. I'll give you another example is Boar's Head Products. This is a major meat uh, deli provider. You see it in every grocery store across America. They have signs up because they want to jump on this bandwagon of no artificial ingredients. And they have signs up that say no artificial colors. But when you look at some of their meats, they have artificial caramel coloring in it, level three and level four. That's considered a carcinogen by the National Toxicology Program that's tested these compounds within this ammonia-based dye that's widely used in the food industry. And they're adding it to meat to color meat that, you know, loses its color because it's so processed. So there's a lot of chameleon behavior going on. Absolutely. People are trying to, you know, ride this wave and say they're natural, say they're artificial free, but they're not quite there yet. And so it's up to us, you know, activists and other consumers who are becoming aware about all these different intricacies to like speak up and make sure people know about it. Anthony Gucciardi, you've got a bunch of news basically integrated into what she's saying. I do have a lot of news. And also I want to say there is a lot of deception and labeling. For example, I've pointed out before, someone can call something like an organic line. I could say Anthony's Organics, and that could just be a registered trademark. It doesn't actually mean it's an organic product. So that's another thing. I've seen products called, you know, such and such organics when it's actually not even organic ingredients in it. But I think just eating well and trying to eat organic and trying not to eat total crap, you're already better than 98% of the population. You know, just drinking clean water. Real purified water. Yeah, that's one attack I hear is, oh, none of it's perfect. You can never do it. Just go with everything bad. That, that used to be my attitude. No, no, we change it by trying to make our lives better and others' lives better incrementally. Exactly, because listening to all this, it's super overwhel overwhelming for the average person. The average person doesn't even know really what a GMO is or how to know if they're eating GMOs. So when we talk about all these things the corporations are doing, buying up all these organic companies, which is going on, it's almost impossible to catch every little angle, even with these things like the registered trademarks where it says Joe's Organics and it's not even organic. But just buying organic and trying your best to be healthy is key. And I think it is motivational to think about how much you're avoiding. Because look at this study. Study, GMO soy accumulates cancer-causing formaldehyde. This is a new study. In a groundbreaking new study published in the peer-reviewed journal Agricultural Sciences, researchers have found that when soy is genetically engineered, it disrupts the plant's natural ability to control stress and sparks the production of carcinogenic formaldehyde. The new research, led by MIT trained biologists, the researchers discovered that the accumulation of formaldehyde, the known carcinogen, and a dramatic depletion of glutathione, which is essential for your overall production of the liver, an antioxidant necessary for cellular detoxification is a result of genetic tinkering with soy plants. So they're messing with, with soy, modifying it. They admit they don't know what's happening. They admit they don't know what's going on. Former EPA scientists are voicing their opposition against this. Everyone is freaking out about this new study, and we're still sitting here eating it. We know it's causing formaldehyde to develop in the accumulation when they mess with the soy, but we're still eating it. That's why, like Alex was saying earlier, we're being forced to import soy from Romania, because organic soy, because people aren't buying the GMOs anymore. The house of cards is crumbling. We are defeated. Well, that's what's that. crazy. The only farmers we know, because we're in farming and ranching, family business still, is organics. Real organic, and then you got to get the certifications. And there'll be farmers going out of business because all they know how to do is deal with Monsanto or Archer Daniels Midland, they don't know that the free market is the way for them out. Because you'll go to the farmer's market, you'll go to one of these uh, you know, events where they got the blue ribbon pigs and the rest of it, the fair, and it's all sponsored by Monsanto, and it's only their farmers that are there. So they are using the ignorance of folks to continue this. And America is exceptional in that we are exceptionally unhealthy. We have exceptional amounts of GMO. Vani Hari, I've seen the statistics, but aren't we in the top two or three worst nations for additives and GMO? Don't we lead the world in a GMO toxic uh, dumping ground? No, absolutely. And we're one of the only countries that doesn't label GMOs, even though 65 other countries do. Russia, China, India, most of, uh, you know, some comp countries, I just went to Tanzania and Rwanda. They don't even allow GMOs to be grown there, and they're getting a lot of pressure to be, 